Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about uh, Webtoons. We're going to talk about Tapas, which is another Webtoon host apart from uh, Webtoon, which mm -hmm. is owned by Naver. Tapas is actually used to be Tapastic. It was Tapastic, yes. And it was here first. It was here first. So we're going to talk about this because they're teaming up with a graphic novel publisher. Shouldn't surprise anyone. Basically, Webtoons are becoming a breeding ground proving ground for uh, graphic novel deals. Mm -hmm. And they're tying, yeah, and they're li linking up with all the, the mainstream publishers and. Right, right. So definitely thank Lore Olympus, I think, for that. Yeah. Because Lore Olympus did uh, very, very well. Uh, Webtoon Lore Olympus. I still need to buy this for Pinky Boo because she really wanted it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get for her. Um, but, you know, usually all it takes is one hit, whether it's, you know, look at graphic novels and, you know, they had like Smile, Rana Telgemeier, mm. and all of a sudden they had this mad rush to do similar things. And then, uh, you know, Diary of a Wimpy Kid was big. And then all of a sudden everybody's doing stuff like that. Now it's Dog Man's Flavor of the Month. And you got people doing knockoffs with cats instead of dogs. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I mean, it's just kind of, it just kind of sets the tone, right? Uh, for sure. So we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about Webtoons. We're going to talk about Topastic. Um, maybe, you know, talk a little bit about the history of uh, both of these platforms because we were there. We were there, yes. Yeah, everybody gets sick of us saying we were there. But, but the, we were. We were there. We were there at the very, we, very we, beginning. We literally were there for um, all these things. Uh, yeah, so this one was interesting because it was Topostic before. Now, back in the day when it started, Topostic was here before Webtoons. And I remember they were giving out these ridiculous, because they had Venture Capital, yep. which we've mentioned many yep. times. And they were giving out these ridiculous uh, rates. Like if you would get so many views on there uh, a month, you were getting like $3,000 or something like that. It was something, it was really high. And people were like, you know, putting all their advertisement all over Project Wonderful and everywhere, trying to get people to their site to get this money. Now they, they came after us, they wanted us. But we couldn't do it because we were already tied to a contract with someplace else, so we couldn't go over. Yeah, we were. I mean, I'll, I'll say we're. Right? We were on Keen Spot. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing pretty well on Keen Spot uh, view wise, but we were locked into a contract with them. But yeah, they wanted us to bring our stuff over, and uh, you can actually go out to shopclownfish.com and uh, see the books. Yeah, and see the books of the web comics material. But we were on um, after we left Keen Spot. Uh, we were mirroring, we went to our own website mm -hmm. and then we're mirroring the content on Webtoon and Topastic as well, uh, back in the day. But yeah, they were throwing money at people to get them they to, were. to leave. And then, and they were getting, they started getting all this ground, getting all this ground with these people with the web comics. Uh, everybody was coming over to Topastic. And I remember that we were one of the ones that started up their forums because their forums weren't doing that good. So they were asking, we used to talk to the people in charge all the time. And they no, were asking they're us, there anymore, no, they're not. Yeah. And they uh, they were like, oh, can you go to the forums and help get people talking and stuff? And and we did. It's so funny. People act like we don't know what we're talking about. And they have no fucking idea. Sorry, mom. Because we were there. We, we were actually the ones they would bring in to try to legitimize sites and to get them people talking about it. When it comes to web comics, right? It's kind of like it's it's clownfish been clownfish all along. Mm -hmm. We were we were uh, behind the scenes uh, involved in. Um, well, we were almost brought in to to run Mark Wade's thrill bent. Um, we were involved in the very early stages of uh, planning Tokyo Pops platform. We were actually they like, didn't they decided not to do it then. They, they kind of did it, but it didn't go the way it could have gone. And we gave them input, and they didn't give a shit. Uh, we were involved in that. Um, we were involved in a couple other ones. We were, yeah, one of the first, like, Western comics to, well, eventually on Topastic we got over there and we were doing PR and stuff with them. And then Webtoon uh, initially tried to get us to come over. They weren't offering any money, but then they had, like, some weird contest and stuff. And yeah, now and you then, can't get a human at Webtoon. Well, then we went over weird. and wasn't doing it. I mean, it, I will say Didn't. Webtoon had the best audience, though, for being, yes. like, encouraging and stuff. But. Anyway, but people have no idea, like, um, even back further than that, like Print Ninja. Everybody goes on about Print Ninja, right? I'm going to bring this up again because I want to make sure I piss on this because I'm so effing tired of people acting like we don't know what the hell we're talking about. Print Ninja. Print Ninja now is known for printing comic books, but they didn't used to do that. Nope. And I'll let Neon tell the story. So they did mostly catalogs, right? And, and I actually... And like, like anime convention pamphlets and stuff pamphlets like that. Pamphlets and stuff like that. And I was looking for... Um, now, granted, they, they do print overseas, but I was looking for an easier 
solution for the very first Chow Binders books. Mm-hmm. And um, you used to work as a pr- with a printer. Yeah, so, I, I, as yeah. a printer. Yeah, I actually worked in pr- my first jobs. I worked in print shops. I worked at newspapers and stuff. I'm like, well, a printer's a printer because there weren't very many options to print comic books back then. Uh, a lot of times you had to go to like Canada or you had to you deal with like I think it was Trans Blue or something. One of these overseas printers, and a lot of stuff got lost in the communication. So Print Ninja um, opened up shop in Chicago, and they were at that point. Just doing uh, like brochure know, brochures stuff and, catalogs. and catalogs. And I, I called them up and I said, I need to get a quote on some graphic novels. And they're like, what, like comic books? I'm like, yeah, a little bit thicker than that. But, you know, same as a catalog. Just, you know, what, what can you do? That led to like an hour long phone call mm-hmm. with their sales rep at the time. And then um, they actually started. I don't know who they're using now, but at the time they were using the same printer that Scholastic did. Mm-hmm. Um with the first run, you know, round of books or whatever. But yeah, so we worked it out and I had to explain like, here's Kickstarter and here's what people are doing. Yeah, and, and you actually worked with the person directly and you had to go back and forth. They kept coming to you to ask you for specs and stuff because they didn't even have those things. Mm-mm. Anyway, long story short, they ended up printing Shadow Binders. It was the first graphic novel they printed. It was and they the were very so first, excited about it. Very that first They graphic asked novel, us yes. to get, we had to send them some more because they were going to like C2E2 yep. and other shows and they needed to take the books with them. And then... Fast forward, now they're like doing millions in printing for comic books and all this shit. And everybody's like looking their dad. Like, oh, I'm so and so, and I'm so important. I'm a, I have this big Kickstarter, and me, me, me. And what do you know? It's like, I, we are literally why Print Ninja prints books now. And I don't care. It's the truth. We have the emails to prove it. <laughs> But none of the people that, that were working there at the time were there. Now. No, but we still we have the, the the communications to prove it. Yeah. So uh, anyway, um, so we've been, look, we, you know, even though we haven't been on YouTube that long, and actually been on YouTube longer than people think we, we had another channel before this one, uh, did totally different stuff. But, you know, we've been in the, the web comic scene for a long time. This mm-hmm. is why you know, we did that hour long video talking about the Kickstarter situation and Spike Trotman having to melt down all that. Cause I'm like, yes, these are a lot of the players a lot of the people you're seeing in mainstream comics right now were in the same scene we were in 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, and everybody kind of knows everybody, and some people hate each other, and that's just the way it is. But, you know, this is really interesting because it took them, like, 10 years to get to the point where, like, maybe we should print books. <laughs> Much like this video. It took us a while took to, us get 10 to, years to get to, to get the, to the, the point of tapas again. Point. I just want so – I mean, people say comments. But, yes. So, tapas now is going to team up with Andrews and McMeal, which is funny because um, Webtoons, on the other hand, has been doing this kind of stuff for a while. I also want to put out – Tapas started switching over to like more like a, a prose type thing yeah. with novels and things like that. People were doing that. And then here comes Webtoons buying out Wattpad. Yeah. So that was that was Tapas' thing. They started out, you know, doing the comics and then Webtoon came in and Webtoon, you know, backed by neighbors, like the big 800 pound gorilla. And they came in and then Tapas is like, well, we got to expand. So we're going to do like light novels and you can, you know, they had their like Tapas. Yeah, like coins. coins or something, yes. Oh my god, it's cryptocurrency. Yeah, you buy it was. You'd buy coins, and I don't know how they do it now because I haven't been over there in years, but you could you could uh you know buy chapters ahead, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like Patreon. So they had all this stuff figured out, and then Webtoon, frankly, kind of lifted that off of Tapis. Mm-hmm. You know, and then Webtoon, though, they've had a lot of success, you know, obviously Lore Olympus, but they're making deals with like DC Comics, Archie Comics, Marvel Comics, um, because they're realizing that there is a massive demand for comics content on the internet and now and in print now and in print people buy what they're familiar with the reason look the reason that uh, people sell so many comic books through crowdfunding is they have an online platform of some kind whether it's uh, youtube or a web comic or a podcast or whatever the hell it is twitter twitter you know that's how you're selling books people buy what they they have heard of and, you know, gone are the days of just dropping a, a comic book in a shop and hoping somebody walks by and picks it up. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't find it because the comic books are all buried behind which the Funko in, Pops. Which in some ways is is better for people because, you know, you can be found easier. But in some ways it's worse because there's so much competition because you can be found easier. And, yeah. you know, best times, worst of times type thing. But, yeah, so now Tapas is going to go and do graphic novels, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like what they did with Laura Olympus over at Webtoons. Yeah, so this is uh, this is coming from again from ICV2. Tapas Media teams up with Andrews McMeal. Now Andrews McMeal did I like the calendars, like the Garfield type calendars, and they mm. do a lot of uh, taking uh, comic strips and turning them into books. And they also do a lot with uh, you know web comics people that are more 
at least up to this point, been more like humor based web comics. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they do okay. So it's interesting that they're they're jumping into this now too. Again, um, about ten years late to the party, but they should have been doing this about ten years ago. But now since Webtoon's doing it, we gotta do it too, right? Uh, Tapas and Andrews McMeal are teaming up to publish a new line of graphic novels based on Studio Tapas properties that feature strong female and underrepresented characters, according to the announcement. Of course. Of, of course, course they are. Uh, Studio Tapas is a division of Tapas Media that develops and publishes original web comics that are wholly owned by Tapas. See, this is a new – I didn't even know they were doing this. Well, I didn't know they were doing that either. But that, that guess, guess which ones – guess which ones are going to get book deals and you get pushed to the forefront. <laughs> Uh, Amp is the publisher of Big Nate, Phoebe and Her Unicorn, and other properties, many of which are syndicated newspaper right. strips. Yes. Uh, the two companies have signed a multi-book deal that will kick off with three properties this fall. Uh, Unfamiliar by Haley Newsom, Lavender Town is the story of a young witch who makes friends with a ghost who haunt her house and help them find fulfillment. The webcomic got 30 million views. Well, that's respectable, right? DPS only. Uh, Valinxie follows a young woman as she makes a name for herself in the world of esports. Uh-oh, overcoming numerous obstacles, like men. Probably. Uh, webcomic was nominated for an Eisner. That doesn't mean jack shit. That Sorry. That doesn't mean jack shit It doesn't anymore. anymore. Uh, the Witch's Throne. I'm, I'm sensing a theme here. A lot of witches. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Now we need to change Cake Bitch to Cake Witch. Oh, there you go. Cake Witch. Cake Bitch Witch. Cake, cake Bitch Witch. Cake Witch Bitch. I don't know. <laughs> which bitch is which? The Bitch Witches. Uh, Witch is thrown by What a Hero, a fantasy story with manga and RPG influences, follows a young alchemist, surely female, on a journey to become one of the heroes I don't know of if it their means, world. If it will, they could just be not not white. Um, so anyway, yeah, this doesn't surprise me, but it, you know, just in general, I mean, beyond what they're publishing or whatever, like it does seem like webtoons are becoming a proving ground for people if you're popular online and i think really that's the takeaway from all this is if your stuff is popular online you can probably sell books but this is a dub because they've been taking youtubers like crazy and giving them book deals right and left that is interesting yeah so i just want to bring i want to bring that up too since you mentioned it so youtubers are Jumping to the head of the line, and they've been for about 10 years now, Mm -hmm. and you never noticed uh, because they're not comic book people, but they've been getting book deals. Uh, FGTV is a um, a YouTube family uh, gaming channel. They've been around for God since Skylanders because that's how they started, I think, was with uh, Skylanders. They have 18 million subscribers and over 18.6 billion views. Hey, I don't have as much as that, but we actually can create our own stuff in-house. So, hey, call us. Call us. Anyway, uh, these books, I've seen them at Walmart, you know, and there's a whole series of these Mm -hmm. these books. And again, people are buying these books that normally don't buy comic books because they have a massive online audience. And they're like, hey, let's let's pimp this stuff on our channel, which they Mm do. You know, uh, one of the biggest success stories on YouTube with art and comics would be, uh, you know, Odd Ones Out. Who and ironically used to follow our comic back he when. He did. Before he did YouTube. He was, I remember it was a big deal when he was on, he was on Tapastic. They they cut a deal with him. And Probably. That was, that was back when he only had like a couple hundred thousand subs. He's like, oh my God, you know, Odd Ones Out's on Tapastic with his comics. And, and that was years ago. But his books, again, they're in Walmart. You can pick them up. Um, so the publishers know now that if you have a massive online platform, you know, your book is probably going to sell. And I think, you know, for better or for worse, that's kind of how things are going to be going mm-hmm. forward. I think you are going to have to build your own platform and get your own audience and make a case for why a publisher should take a take a chance on oh, you. Oh, webcomics used to be like that. Sometimes they would come to you. If you if you had like a big following on your webcomic, we're talking pre-crowdfunders. Yeah. Um, if you had a big following um, and even early crowdfunding – they would come to you and give you a deal, a publishing deal for your stuff, because clearly people want to buy it or people are interested in it. Now, sometimes it didn't it didn't pan out. Like they didn't have the audiences like like some of these webcon people do or these like YouTube people do. So it didn't always pan out. And then because it didn't pan out for certain people, other people weren't given a chance. Yeah. It's a whole long story. But um they used to give deals to people who had big audiences on webcomics. They used mm-hmm. to come to you. Yeah. And um I think we're going back to that. You know, mm-hmm. I think we were uh I think we were kind of ahead of the curve on the webcomic thing. And then webcomics kind of went dormant for a couple of years. And then now it seems like webcomics and manga are both coming mm-hmm. back. And it feels like it's 
2008. All hey, over again. again, publishers, we're the whole package. We've got YouTube. We we came from web comics. <laughs> we can do. We have several stories. You're shameless. I, I I don't care. You know what? They're not gonna call anyway. They're I just am like, you know what? They're getting everybody else deals. We actually can do the work ourselves and have all the experience to do it. They might as well give it to me. But I'm a, I'm a, a ginger and a woman. Meanwhile, we've got these books for sale in our store, and uh, we get to keep a much, much larger percent of the profit. That's true. Uh, we probably have made more off of these books than we would have made through a traditional publishing deal, even though we didn't sell as many books as we would have. What's funny is we've actually pitched these publishers before. That is true. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've made lots of money on these books, and we'll continue to make more books and make lots of money. Mm -hmm. Regardless, so you don't really need the publisher either. Just kind of do your no, thing. No, but if, you, if you're interested, you can still give us a call. <laughs> You can talk to our agent. The link is talk in the description. Our, talk to our agent. There you go. All right. That's like the most arrogant. Like, talk to our agent. You know agent. what? I don't care. I'm not even going to be arrogant. I'm thinking more to be a smart ass. But I'm just like, you know, because I'm so tired of it. Because you you guys have no idea. Like, I'm so salty about this shit. You have no idea. <laughs> I think they have a pretty good idea. Because I think if they have you knew... The shit we went through for years oh, doing web comics and going through the proper channels and having the agent and going and doing all the ass kissing stupid, you know, here's the, and then it turns out that you no matter how how well you do and how much you prove that you do, you have the millions of views a month, you sell books and they sell like crazy, doesn't matter, they won't take you because you're like not, you don't identify the right way at that time. And then turn around and then somebody who literally has like Minecraft videos on YouTube gets a whole book series uh, based on Minecraft characters and they're in every Walmart ever. Yes. If you had sat through the agent meetings that we talked to with the one lady in particular who everybody kisses her ass and where she sat and berated us for two hours and told us we didn't know what we were talking about, said, well, we want our books in Walmart, then turned around and got their clients' books in Walmart after we mentioned it, you'd be salty and pissed too. We've been through a lot of shit. Uh, we have, and we like to, to share those experiences. And then they're like, you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. You've never done anything. It's like, oh, fuck you from Monday to Sunday. You have no idea. And I'm not sorry, Mom, because Mom was there. Mom knows what happened, and she'd agree with me. Comics broke our heart. Uh, they did. They they definitely, uh, yeah. It's, it's Tapest uh, hired us. Or, well, they wanted us to come in and begged us to do their forums and all this shit. You have no idea. This is the thanks we get. I know. It's just like, we've been print ninja, basically, where they're like, they're here because of our, because you, mostly because of you, and you know, everything else. It's like, yeah, exactly. It's so frustrating. You have no idea. Oh, I am completely used to being fucked over by everybody about everything. And it's anymore. not fun. It's not Usually fun. Usually you hear being fucked over, it sounds like, oh, that sounds like fun. It's not fun. Yeah. The well, reason we're here is because we've done, we've been down all these roads. If there's been a crevice, we've been in it. Now we can share our pain with you to yes, avoid, yes. to avoid uh, getting fucked over as well. So just make sure you always have a backup. Don't. That's the biggest mistake I see with with uh, comics creators. They're like, well, if the Scholastic's not going to take me, I'm not a real comic book creator. If you know uh, some hole in the wall publisher, you know, Black Mask doesn't publish my stuff. You know, and you see people that have deals and they're starving. They're like begging for money. That's because they don't give you much money. No, they don't. Like you, you do realize, like just for the umpteenth time, right? If you get a scholastic deal, your advance is probably going to be like five to $15,000 for one book that could take you two or three years to complete. Mm -hmm. And you get paid in stages as you hit, you know, 25, 50%. And then your agent takes a cut because yeah. you're going to have to have an agent do the legal work. Unless you're a big name, then they probably throw all kinds of money at you. Oh, I'm sh I'm sure uh, uh, FGTV got got big fat mm -hmm. payout. But they have the, the audience to command that, you mm -hmm. know, so... There it is. Anyway, anyway, this video was way, way longer than I thought it was going to be. I, I didn't mean to go off, but That's I was okay. like, people have no idea. It's like so much shit. And like, and then they act like you don't know what you're talking about. Or you're like, well, you're just salty. And it's like, like you have no fucking idea. Salt flows. I'm just uh, like, we you have know been what? Through, we've been through, no, seriously though, we've been through like, uh, I've worked in comics professionally for what, like 15, 20 years. And we have been fucked over so many times mm -hmm. and, and i mean and and, and, and and by your fuckery. friends even oh yeah, yeah. like you oh, know, especially oh, by your friends disney especially comics, by your friends disney comics let me tell you that is the biggest shit show ever it used to be like so cutthroat you they had these factions right <laughs> and they would get these little factions and if you didn't belong in one of the factions or you didn't want to just take the fact that oh you can be so and so's colorist if you if, and you can stay there or whatever then they literally would go and get deals for themselves and then not tell you and then they get pissed when you found out about it and backdoor dealed it and got your own deal because they tried to keep you out. 
the comics is it's so weird because YouTubers are so shocked at how catty the comic industry has become. And I'm like, no. It's been. It's always been this way. At least as long as I've been in it. I mean, maybe it was different in the 70s and 80s when there was more money. But since I've been doing it, it's always been full of catty, backstabbing, devious people. Oh, and web comics too. I mean, yeah. like, I, I got, I mean, I know we didn't wrap this up, but I'm just like, web comics too, because you guys, like, when, when you're on the same level of some of these people, they're like, you know, oh, we're all friends, kumbaya, community, community, mm-hmm. let's yeah. hug it out. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm like, and I'm always one that's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm person that I, 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 I'm like, okay, let's be friends, you know, and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, yay. And then when you get bigger and bigger and bigger, they stop talking to you. Or they get really pissed off, or they 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 need to stop talking to you and treat you like shit and ostracize you, because you're not one of them anymore. Or they they just keep treating you like you like oh I started a year before you so you're still beneath me. Either way, and it's like but there's, you don't get to be like you know we're on the same level and we're friends, and you don't get to be like that. And the bigger you get, the less people talk to you and the less friends you have. And it made me so mad because like I still want even if we got bigger and I'm not bragging about it, but we used to get millions of views, and I'd be like. Yay, you know, we're doing really well. And I wanted to share it with my friends, and my friends would be complete asshats about it. Yeah, well, it's still it still kind of happens in YouTube. Not as much as webcomics, but oh, no, YouTube is nowhere near as bad I, as webcomics. I think I think it's uh, I'll tell you the truth, it's scarcity of resources because I'll tell you, this is my unified theory of everything. Because there's no money, there's a finite amount of money. It's finite a, amount of eyeballs. A finite amount of eyeballs. It is survivor. There's so many people that want to do comics. Like everybody who's ever read a comic wants to make comics. Everybody who's ever drawn thinks that they're going to make the next big thing. And people form like strategic alliances, but they're not really your friends. They're mm-hmm. just hoping that they're going to be the ones who get picked. And it's just like watching a reality show. And you see it in real time. Like you see people that were like, Yeah, and I'm not even talking about us. I've seen other people that, like, be complete besties, and then, like, one of them gets, like, a book deal, and the other one doesn't. And then the next thing you know, that person's getting getting canceled, or they're gossiping about them on forums. Yeah, or not to their face. Not to their face, but... Like, can you believe it? Now, who does she think oh, she I've is? I've seen like the most two-faced people like on the on the internet. They're like, oh my gosh, we're all in this together. Yay, kumbaya. No, it's, Yay, yeah, I'm it's the biggest smarting. cheerleader for you. Come listen to my my podcast and listen to how great I am. And then they turn around and then they talk to you on down low and they're like, well, I wasn't there to be their friend. I was there to make money. And it's like, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, and you, so, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, um, at least with me, I, I am consistent. I have always unapologetically been an asshole. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will, you know, and I've always unapologetically been a capitalist. And, uh, you know, and that that has, has caused us friction in the past with people because I'm like, so you making money? How are you making money? You want to make money, right? And like, money? This isn't about money. This is I had about, a dream. This is about the I art. I a dream. But really, it's, <laughs> really, it's about money. You know, and they're just trying to, you know, this is the persona. It's all about the art and the experience and the self-expression and the uniting the community. It's like, no, fuck that. How much money are you actually making? Well, we, that, well, well we know it's united community. Your friends that know you for years, when they think that you said something, that that, that you said something bad because you asked about Marvel numbers, they I, all unfollow you. Yeah, you know, and that's, it's like. That's the community right there. So I'm that's just, I'm just tired of it. Anyway, you should tell you this video. Geeky gets pissed about comics and rants for, you know, an hour. Because that's basically <laughs> what it was. Sorry. Anyway, anyway, uh, tales, tales from the gutters, the comic book gutters. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap mm-hmm. it up. We're gonna wrap it up. Yeah, I'll All stop right. talking. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.